Hello everybody and welcome back to Bright Minded live with Ashley O. So today is April Fool's Day and so I thought I was going to bring out one of my alter egos. No, not Hannah Montana. No, not Tiger King. But the one and the only Ashley O. So welcome to Bright Minded Live with Ashley O. Hey y'all, whoa, good morning and good night to some of y'all watching Bright Minded Live with Ashley O. I have seriously a totally awesome episode for all of you watching today. Aunt Catherine really came through with those bookings. Thanks Aunt Catherine, I owe everything to you. So, today we've got fellow pop icon, Anita, who I've known for years. Ashley O and Anita actually even toured together. We've seen, um, we've got fellow pop icon, Anita, who I've known for years, and we've even toured together. We've got another type of, waiting for them to tell my followers. Letting everyone join. I know no one wants to miss Anita. I'm very excited to have her on the show today. Let me just get this a little more situated. Okay, wig is snatched, wig is snatched. Okay, so it is time to introduce Brazilian pop sensation, Anita. Okay, I'm staying on the live. We're getting Anita. I know no one wants to miss this. So, should I get that sign going? Okay. We are going to connect Brazilian pop sensation Anita. In the meantime, we're going to listen to some of her music. because our fans have been going wild about us connecting and they it are was, 
they are going just insane. This is so awesome. So it was your birthday Monday, I heard. Yes, it birthday. was. It was my birthday Monday and I did nothing. That's what <laughs> I was wondering. You know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be experiencing that. How was it like celebrating your birthday kind of without celebrating and just kind of having to spend time inside? It was sad. Actually, I was really sad in the because I'm a very party person. You know, every Dang. year, every year in my birthday, I do like a huge party in my house for like 500 people, and I have live shows and everything. And this year, I needed to cancel everything, so I was so upset. I was like, "Oh my god!" So my birthday was kind of sad. So how did you how did you deal with those emotions? Like, what are some tools and tricks you use to kind of deal with that? I got drunk. Yes, alone. <laughs> no, with my boyfriend because he's with me. Um, I got drunk and I ate a, a huge cake, and I I, I I ate a lot, like a lot of food. Yeah. I got drunk and that was the way that I escaped, but I was like really upset, really sad. So I heard that you're an awesome cook also, like you're just a badass, like you love food, love cooking. What's your favorite kind of dish or like what's something traditional that maybe I haven't had that's like really, really good? So um, I'm trying to keep my uh, vegan, uh, not the 100% because yeah. sometimes I can, sometimes I, I run away a little bit. But I try, I, I try to be vegan most of the time. So the Brazilian food that I love the most here is like a, a it's called feijoada it's like black beans with Brazilian ones not Cuban not Mexican black Brazilian beans and it's like a soup of that and uh, they do with with a, a pig pork whatever but I like to do the vegan one which is with um tofu and it's so good it's like that sounds yum um, so I performed a couple of times in Brazil I love I know Brazil. I also love to party and dance and go wild and so so did the crowd actually i think one of my last shows i did in brazil it was pouring rain like it was totally sunny and gorgeous on the beach i the was morning. there it was pouring rain in sao paulo and everyone was still like partying and i was thinking no one's gonna show up no one's gonna be at my show they didn't give a fuck like it was still just packed and like it was like it wasn't even happening it was so cool it was huge. I was there in Sao Paulo, and then the, the next day you were in Rio. Yeah. And yeah, it was amazing. And even if it was raining, people were dancing. Brazilians are like that. They don't like to lose a party. They they are. We are Brazilians. We are dealing really. We are really sad with this because it's a Brazilian way to be. You know, like a few weeks ago we were doing carnival, so we are party people, celebrate people. So it's it's tough this moment for us. For yeah, I had, a, I had a question about that. You know, like most of the world, Brazil is going to be hit hard by this pandemic. And we've seen local activists already stepping up to organize and try to prepare local communities. Do you have a message of how to stay bright in these dark times? And also, I think it's just really important to encourage people to stay home if and when they can and protect each other. Yeah, so in the beginning, um... I was starting to, what I tried to do, because I, I, I started to feel like I was going to panic sometime, because a lot of time doing nothing, a lot of time not producing, and I'm a person who likes to, to, to travel every time, work a lot. So I started to do, to reschedule some lives, doing like cook sessions, uh, workout, uh, French classes. But then in the, like, after, I think, 10 days, I started to get really sad. Yeah, like with this, no, don't go out. Don't I? I got really sad. Now I'm starting to get better. I think it, it was more because of my party, my birth, my birthday too, of, of far away from everyone. And then I canceled the lives. But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring forces again to come back. Because yeah. been, I think it's moments, you know. Sometimes you're amazing. Sometimes you feel like, oh my god, let's go. It's, Never I had that day. I had that day yesterday. Like, I was totally good. I've been doing this show. I've been having so much fun. Today, I'm like, I get to be Ashley O today. So I was going to have so much fun. It's April Fool's. But I love pranks. I love April Fool's. And there's no one for me to prank right now. I'm, like, alone. And I can't pull all my jokes that I love to pull. So I just have to, like, right now, I just ran out to my boyfriend as Ashley O. And he's never seen Ashley O before. So 
I show my get freaky later, you know. Um, <laughs> so two were just named by Forbes, the most powerful woman in Brazil. How does that make you feel coming from how you were raised and how has your life changed and evolved? So I came from, I don't know if you're close to what is a favela in Brazil, yeah. like a, a, a very humble part in Brazil. And I came from a personal, from a, a place like that. And my, my life was so different. I had no, that was, that was one of the reasons that I got so sad in my birthday because I never had a party. I never, I, I never used to have a, a birthday party in my life until I got to be a single, a singer, because then I, I started to have money to, to make parties, to host parties, whatever. So I was really sad about this because all my childhood, my teenagehood, I was like, I had no access of, for, for anything. And then I started to sing in the favelas, to sing for like the small places in Rio and then got bigger, bigger, bigger. And then I started to feel like my life changing. Yeah. It was amazing because uh, I was like 20 years old. And then I started to manage myself, me and my brother. We opened the company. We were like, we are partners until nowadays. So my whole life and my friends and family changed. And that's amazing. That is crazy because I'm from... I'm from a really small town in Nashville, but I was born and raised in the industry. My dad was always singing. I was on a tour bus and falling around on tour before I could even walk. Like I would crawl and escape the nanny. And my favorite thing was girls used to throw bras and underwear at my dad. And I would find the biggest one and I would like wrap it around my head and like turn it into like some sort of head scar for like something I would just, I was always on these tours. So I couldn't imagine not growing up in the industry and so it's just so amazing that you're like self-made and that you also are a family business because we are too my mom is my manager i toured with my brother i've toured i did a show with my dad for 10 years like we're just a family-run business so i love that you all are also yeah me and my brother i miss him oh my god i don't see him in a while me and my brother we we, we work together we opened our company without knowing anything in the business and he was like but how are you going to do this? We don't know anything. We have yeah. no experience. And I was like, we're going to learn. We're yeah. going to learn by, by ourselves together. Let's go. And nowadays, he's like amazing, an amazing professional. And yeah, I, I think I feel better when we are in family because this world, this this life in the industry, for me, it was very different because I, I, I was born with this, my family. My family is like 15 people. Yeah, but we are very close and like together every time. And uh, now I have like everyone around. But when I go to the hotel, I'm alone. Yeah, so that was something that I needed to learn how to deal with. Um, but now they come with me. They they kind of switch. One day is my mom coming. The other yeah. day is my brother. Then my dad. So this moment now I got sad mostly because of this too i don't see my family but when i'm tra when i'm traveling on tour they come with me that's the same thing that we do like someone is always on set from my family somebody even my grandma my grandma runs my fan club so she like signs all the little things and then literally and it like it keeps her like young because she's got all this like mail coming in and she all this but if someone sends a photo of me that she likes she keeps it for herself and frames it she doesn't send it back. So she like keeps all the pictures of me sometimes. It's really so bad. there's this aunt of mine that she used to call the radios every oh day to ask for my songs. When I was starting, she used to call the radios with different voices and say, hey, I'm Anita Span. I want that song. And then she oh. like, I'm Anita Span. I want that song. Instead of having like a fan club, we have a fam club. We yes. Have, like, and then funny shit. Yeah, and if the radio didn't play the song, she used to call again and say, hey, I asked for Anita 30 minutes ago. Where is the song? And she was like obsessed. That is too, that is just so good. Um, I was going to ask you, so speaking of your music and requesting your music, Ryan Tedder, who was on Bright Minded a couple days ago, he's producing your record. He's a super close friend of mine, and he's working on my album also. We're collaborators. So what's your new album sounding like, and what's it like to work with Ryan Tedder? Man, I, 
I love Ryan. For me, it was a surprise. I've never, I've never thought I would be with him, like producing my my whole album. And he's like directing everything for me, and it's a pleasure because I learn a lot with him. And we are practical in the way of working. So I get into the studio with him, and it's just fast. We get a song like it, pa, 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 pa. and it's such. A, we had such a chemistry on that because I I hate to waste my time too. So when we yes. go to the studio. When we go to the studio, we were not like hanging and chilling and waiting. No, we we are doing the things, get the things done, and I love it. Uh, my manager Brandon was the one who introduced me to to Ryan, and I loved. I started to search more about his writer and producer work. I didn't know before that that much, so I fell in love. And we have uh, we are mixing a lot of different. Um, sounds of brazil and mixing with american culture so every single song we put some brazilian flavor flavor on that you know and all my fans they are like obsessed to know what is to come we were about to we are gonna sing at coachella yeah uh, yeah in the main stage we were like super excited to put music out but now in this moment we are waiting because uh, this moment in the world it's kind of tricky for us to release things. I think it's such a happy, important moment. I feel the same way because, you know, my fans are also obsessed. I see them right now writing, like, where's the next album? We, like, they, like, go insane or, like, if a little snippet of a song leaks and then they just, like, go crazy and of that snippet. But my music is about community, club culture, getting together, listening to the record at the same time, getting sweaty, dancing, sharing drinks, sharing joints, like, it's about community and like connecting. And so to put out a record in a time where people can't connect and can't get, and even if it's like at your house, having a listening party, you want that. You want people to listen to the album. I feel the same. Not alone in their room. I feel the same. And I think that um, the type of music that we are cooking, it's such a, this vibe, like getting together, dancing together, like partying. And that's what I felt. We had all these things done, ready to put out before Coachella. And we just changed everything, like thinking that this is a different moment. You know, we need to wait and see how the world is going to react and, and how the things are going to be so we can start planning the things again. And that was the decision. And But talking about Ryan, we cooked a lot of great music, like culture stuff for Brazil, like all types of music, uh, mixing rhythms that people will start knowing out of Brazil too. That is super, super sick. And you know, again, about staying true to who you are, that's something that I did when I made bangers. I had been another character for so long, which I can't stop with like creating these different characters. Um, but, oh, she's going then, come on. Oh, I, I, oh, there, I, you're, I good. you're good. I think it's going in. Okay. So, you know, after being on Hannah Montana for so long, the next record that I made was Bangers. And I have been someone that I wasn't for so long that it was ready to be like the most myself that I could ever be. So I couldn't do that without having country influence on the record. Even though that wasn't all I was listening to, I was listening to, I'm always listening to Britney, but I'm listening to like, I was listening to pop like Britney, or I was listening to, you know, what Mike Will was making at the time with like Juicy J or with his band, um, you know, with Sway Lee and with Ray Sermon. So I was listening to everything, but I couldn't abandon country music because that's like what I was, that's like my, my, in my blood. And so when you reinvent a sound, when you go, okay, I can play, I can like honor and respect who I'm from, but I can reinvent it. So it crosses state lines or seas or countries. Like it can actually go beyond your culture and, and where you're from. And like uh, then other artists also get inspired. And then you'll hear like some Brazilian flavor on something by another artist that never would have been inspired, but they love your music. And so I just think it's cool how music really doesn't give a fuck about borders or boundaries. It just is. And like, you can just be so inspired. And I think it's super important that you take your roots everywhere with you that you go, because that's always been really important for me too. Yeah, and I loved that you had moments, you know, like I love this idea of changing, changing yourself, reinvent yourself. I love this. Like when you see uh, a career that you can get curious again of, 
how's this gonna show up? How the next thing is gonna be? Because you're <laughs> always recreating yourself. I love this. This is something I really uh, care about when I'm working. And now with this with this album with Ryan, he was really um, he was amazing and humble because he got to learn the Brazilian culture with me. That was perfect, you know. Yeah, he was so humble, searching with me about the culture, understanding the. Brazilian things like even the hood the like simple things and getting getting connected with um with Brazilian people who was making music he was he is perfect and I'm in love with the and excited for this whole thing to stop and for us to drop the music out yeah I agree I I love Ryan he's done the same thing with me and like even if it's just me telling him my story like of the last two years I've had a lot of things going yeah. on there. Last two years, I was actually filming Black Mirror when I had lost my house in the fires in Malibu. Now I saw that. this happening, like there's just been so many things and you know breakups and and losses. And so even if I just spend two days with Ryan, just like vomiting my story and us like getting song ideas, we were talking one day and he's like, "You speak in song titles." Like there's so many things and we write down the titles, but we go through the whole story so we can tell that story with the music. So. He is just um, the the best. He is the best. Yeah, and we also mix the the, the Latin flavor too because um, some people mix because Brazil speaks Portuguese, mm -hmm. and the Latin people from the other countries speak Spanish. So sometimes they kind of think it's the same culture, but it's so different. So I also speak Spanish. I speak Portuguese, Spanish, and English. So when it's a Spanish, the Spanish verse I write, and he always trusts what I'm writing, and then he writes the things in English, and I trust him. It's it's super cool. I, I love this creation part. That is so cool, and I'm so stoked to hear the new music. Before we sign off, um, I have Diplo on later, so I want to play your song. But is there anything that you wanted to say directly to your fans watching? Like that you have so many people watching right now, so many people watching the episode. Anything you want to say to your fans um, that are expecting your music and how they can stay safe during this time? I'm gonna say some Spanish because everyone is asking here for to speak some <laughs> Spanish. Hola mis amores, muah gracias a todos los fans míos, Ed and Miley que están acá mirando, nos asistiendo, los amamos, los queremos. Estamos ahí esperando que todo esto pase para ponemos canciones afuera. Uh, for all, para los fans brasileños, gracias por el cariño. And for all the fans, thank you so much for the love and kindness with me in my birthday. Um, and also, we're waiting for the project. Uh, I'm also so excited as you guys are. And I think all the artists are right now waiting. Oh, this is my dog. We're in like the line. Everyone's at the starting line. Like, when do we let us add them? Let us add it. What? Sorry. All of us are like sitting at like the starting line. Like, you know, we were all ready to put out the records, and we're all just sitting there now. Like, do do do. Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, let us add it. Let us put the music out. You know, so all of us are in the same boat. In my birthday, when I got drunk by myself, I started to play my new music, and, and I just... always do. <laughs> I always do. The new music here and having fun by myself. Like, oh my God, when people listen to that. They are going to have so much fun. Well, thank you for being on the show. And Ryan, Ryan's here watching us. Ryan, thank you. Thank I you, Ryan. You. Deep Blue, I love you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>